Welcome to TSAT. We started discussing about public finance and as part of public finance we happen to discuss certain parts related to fiscal policy. I mean to say fiscal policy is all about income and expenditure of the government of India. And then we also happen to dis okay, discuss about, uh, we had a very brief introduction about public debt too. So as part, before concluding the session public finance, I also made it clear that the most important part of public finance is the source of revenue to the government of India and that's going to be the taxation. So today in this particular session, we will be discussing about taxation. So we will be discussing various terminologies related to taxation. That's what helpful for your examination. So now let's define what exactly is a tax. Tax is a compulsory payment that the citizens ought to pay to the state. Why is that we are okay? So generally, imagine if I'm working for a company, the company is bound to compensate for the time I spent for the company. So it's a quid pro quo transaction. But that's not the case with the taxation. So for the amount of tax you are paying, it's not necessary that you are getting paid something or you are being provided some goods and services immediately in return for the tax you are paying. It's a compulsory payment one has to pay. Okay, so now let's try to understand various terms related to taxation. So before going to it, let me define what exactly is a taxation. Having seen what's the tax, a tax is a compulsory payment that citizens ought to pay to the state. Let's look at the very common okay, and the most important part of taxation that is direct and indirect tax. The difference between direct and indirect tax. So most of you might have come across this term called income tax and the second is GST. Isn't it? When it comes to direct and indirect tax, these are the two different taxes that comes to you okay, as the best examples of direct and indirect taxes. So taking these examples, let me make it clear. Okay, let's not simply prolong the discussion. Okay, let me make it clear with respect to the difference between direct and indirect tax. Let's say if they comes to income tax. So income tax is simply a tax upon the personal income. So any person who however happens to report an annual income of more than 2.5 lakhs is bound to pay a certain amount of his proportion of income and a certain amount of his income is taxed to the government of India. So whoever happens to be the one who earns an income is the one who is liable to pay a tax. So the tax is levied upon all those people who report an annual income of more than 2.5 lakhs or whoever happen to make more than 2.5 lakhs and those are the people who happen to be responsible to pay the tax. So the tax is levied on you and the tax is also the tax burden is also upon you. Okay. So henceforth since the tax is on you and the tax burden is also the pay, burden of payment of tax is also upon you the tax becomes a direct tax. Whereas take the case of indirect tax. Just let me give an example of GST. So GST the goods and service tax is a tax levied upon the goods and services we consume. So the tax is levied on the goods and services we consume. And the one who consumes these goods and services are the one who happens to bear the burden of payment of taxes. Of course, you don't directly pay these taxes to the government of India, but the one who sells these goods and services are the one who happens to collect from us and pay the taxes. So the tax or goods, the taxes are on the goods and services we consume. The burden is on the one who consumes it. And who happen to pay the tax? The one who happen to sell the goods and the services to the consumers, isn't it? So that's how, because, okay, at the end of the day, it is the one who happen to make income is the one who pay tax tax and the one who consumes the goods and services is the one who pay tax tax. But where exactly, how is the tax levied? How is the tax burden? Okay, I mean, whoever experiences the tax burden, that's how we end up differentiating the direct and indirect taxes. So having understood the difference between direct and indirect tax, let's go ahead with the next concept. So we all know the fact in India, we have taxes levied by the central government, we have taxes levied by the state governments, we also have taxes levied by the local governments. And who happens to, I mean, where does these particular governments derive the right to levy taxes? So many times, if you look at the tax, income tax, who levies income tax in this country? Similarly, take the case of sales tax. In good old days, we used to have a sales tax, tax levied on the sales of goods. Okay, similarly, service tax, wealth tax. Okay. So, Tobin tax, no matter whatever the taxes we do be coming across. So, who levies these taxes? Who has the right to levy these taxes? A particular tax name, say, one income tax or sales tax. Who levies these particular taxes and who collects it, who appropriates it? And that is what's been clearly mentioned in the Constitution of India. So, I would suggest you to refer to the seventh schedule of Constitution of India. So, that would help you to have a clear understanding of who has a right to levy a particular taxes. So the distribution of powers between center and states is something that would help you to very easily understand who happens to levy a particular amount of taxes. I mean, what comes under, sub, okay, what is part of the subject of central list, state list and concrete list. So that would help you to throw an idea of how these particular taxes are levied, okay, to a large extent. So when it comes to taxation, there are three stages or three aspects of taxation. Levy, who levies or who imposes a taxation, a particular tax and who collects it. Let's take the case of income tax. Who in this particular, okay, I mean in this particular country, whether the central government or the state government or the local government, who among these three governments has a right to levy 
income tax. That's first thing you need to understand. So no matter whatever the tax you come across, the first and foremost thing, you, what should come to your mind is who has a right to levy this particular tax that you are paying. Take the case of GST. You know, GST, 50% of component is by the center, 50% component is by the state. Similarly, you come across a tax called luxury tax. Of course, we don't have luxury tax as of now because luxury tax has been subsumed as part of GST. But if you ever come across a tax, let's say excise duty on alcohol or state VAT, okay, on certain okay, petrol product. So if that's the way you happen to come across any particular tax, the first and foremost thing that should come to your mind is who has a right to levy this particular tax and who collects this particular taxes. Okay, and how is this tax revenue appropriated? It's not that all the tax money the center government, okay, the center collects is what the center is going to keep it for itself. No, certain proportion of the income that the center makes in the name of taxes is what the center is okay, expected to share it with the states. So that's what we have seen in the last class when we discussed about budget, isn't it? So after simply paying certain amount of tax revenue, sharing some tax revenue to the states, whatever is being left, that's what the next tax revenue to the center is what we have discussed as part of a budget, isn't it? So these are the three aspects that you always need to remember who levies a particular tax and who has a right to collect the tax and who appropriates that particular tax money collected and how is it appropriated and how is it shared, okay? The next case is with respect to the tax incidence and tax burden. The most important term that comes is tax incidence or tax burden. So whenever you come across these words, okay, so you might be having this confusion, tax levy. So once a tax is levied on a particular product or simply the income that personal individuals make, so who exactly is going to bear the burden? That's what is said to be called as the, the term or that's what's the meaning of the word tax incidence or tax burden. So now let's look at the other most important term related to taxation, tax base. So what does tax base refers to? Tax base refers to the total economic transactions in the economy that comes under a tax net. So whatever is the economic transaction. So when I say economic transaction or an economic activity, anything that has a value and a price attached could be called as an economic transaction or an economic activity. So all those goods and services, income, wealth, assets, all those things that are taxable are said to be part of tax base. So one could easily understand wider is the tax base. Wider is the tax base. The wider is the tax base, more, more more would be the tax revenue. So, so if you have broad tax service, tax base, then you have a very broad tax revenue. Got it? So if you look at wider is the tax base and broader is the tax revenue. So if you have large number of economic transactions and large amount of goods and services are taxable, so more is the people who make income, more is the volume of goods and services that are taxed, more would be the tax revenue. So one could easily say tax revenue is, in a way, tax revenue is proportional to tax base. So if you look at it, it's proportional to tax base. So why is the tax base? More is the tax revenue. So now let's look at the next term related to taxation. Leffer curve. So Leffer curve is a curve that depicts the relation between tax rate and tax revenue. So Leffer is the name of an economist who happened to establish the relation between tax rate and tax revenue. So if you look at on x-axis, if I take the tax rate and on y-axis, if I take the tax revenue, tax revenue. So, what does this economist says is with increase in tax rate, with increase in tax rate, the tax revenue increases and beyond a certain amount, the tax revenue keeps decreasing. So, what does it he say is initially when the tax rate keeps increasing, the tax revenue keeps increasing. But beyond a certain extent, if you end up increasing more and more amount of tax rates, I mean the tax rate keeps going high beyond a certain extent, beyond a certain threshold, the tax revenue keeps decreasing because at very high tax rates, people would not be happy paying tax rates and that's how the tax revenue keeps coming down. That's the most important part. Okay, this is a very common question that's been asked in most of the computer examinations. What is Leffer curve? Okay, we have in previous classes discussed about Okun's law, Phillips curve, isn't it? Similarly, this is something, okay, I mean Leffer curve is a curve that typically relation between tax rate and tax revenue. So the next term related to taxation is tax elasticity and tax buoyancy. So let's look at tax elasticity. So you might have come across this word called price elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand. When I say elasticity, the rate of change. Similarly, when it comes to tax elasticity, if you look at this term tax elasticity with change in tax rate. 
सो इफ आई चेंज अ पर्टिकुलर टैक्स रेट लेट से इनकम टैक्स रेट और सिंपली दी जाके जी एस टी अपॉन अ सर्टन कैटेगरी ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस सो विथ चेंज इन टैक्स रेवेन्यू वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज द चेंज इन द टैक्स रेवेन्यू टैक्स रेवेन्यू सो दिस इज समथिंग आई कुड डिफाइन एज द चेंज इन टैक्स रेवेन्यू द अमाउंट ऑफ चेंज इन टैक्स रेवेन्यू विथ ए सर्टन ओके प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ चेंज इन टैक्स रेट सो हाउ माई वेरिएबल टैक्स रेवेन्यू चेंजेस विथ चेंज इन tax rate is what we call it as tax elasticity and now comes coming to the term tax buoyancy so how would you define tax buoyancy it is change in the tax revenue with a change in income or simply if an economy is experiencing growth of 10% does that necessarily mean that the total tax revenue of the state also increases by 10% not necessary so with change in the income of the nation the change in income of the nation or simply the increase in growth of an economy at what rate the tax revenue is changing that's what we call as a tax buoyancy so how you buoyant a particular taxes okay now let's look at the other three important terms tax expenditure so this is a very common and most popularly okay i mean most number of times asked question tax expenditure so majority of the majority of the people anticipate when it comes to the word tax expenditure tax expenditure is an expenditure made by the government to collect tax this is how people end up simply interpreting it but tax expenditure refers to revenue foregone revenue foregone by the state i mean to say by the government in the form of various tax concessions tax exemptions tax deductions most of you might have seen isn't it all those people who have happened to invest in these particular bonds government bonds or the one who happened to buy an insurance policy so many times you might have come across okay various schemes and various okay initiatives of government of india wherein if you happen to buy a gold okay invest in gold bond scheme or if you happen to invest some amount of money in the government bonds you will be availing certain tax concessions or tax deductions similarly you might have come across various initiatives by the government of india to boost exports or to encourage people investing in sz so you might have seen various kind of tax concessions isn't it the tax deductions and tax concession that the government of india provides to promote various economic activities so in this process whatever is the revenue the government of india foregoes that is foregoed as me it loses by okay in the form of various tax concessions deductions and exemptions is what we call it as a tax expenditure so it simply does mean that the amount of tax money the government was okay losing in the name of some tax concessions is what we call as a tax expenditure and coming to the word tax avoidance coming to the word tax avoidance tax avoidance simply does mean tax planning okay simply if people simply uh, generally if you been given opportunity everyone in the country would like to reduce his tax burden isn't it so if you are trying to reduce your tax burden i mean the amount of tax money you are liable to pay to the state simply through proper tax planning by taking various uh, okay kind of concessions or exemptions or okay these kind of deduction that the government of india provides to you into an advantage and simply trying to reduce your tax burden such kind of practice is said to be called as tax avoidance so every initiative that you happen to go for to reduce your tax burden through proper tax planning by taking certain legal recourse is what you said to be called as a tax avoidance okay so there is nothing illegal in reducing your tax burden okay in the name of tax avoidance whereas when it comes to the word tax evasion it simply does mean that you are evading payment of taxes evading does mean you're not you're not reporting simply if you don't report the income you make you are not going to end up paying any tax to the government of india so if you don't end up reporting any income to the government of india or any economic transaction that you make okay or any source of money that you happen to make in such case you end up paying no tax to the government of india so that's what we call as a tax evasion okay evasion of tax is perfect okay is completely illegal and okay so that's a very basic reason the most of okay many a times whenever you have come across this scenario of tax evasion you could see these people are being punished by the law of the land the reason is it's okay completely illegal so all that particular money that you make and you don't report is generally what we refer to as a black money so black money simply does mean the income not reported the income not uh, reported so why would people would not be happy reporting one reason could be the they are not happy with paying very high taxes very high taxes because people think it's my hard earned money why should i end up paying such a huge amount of taxes and some people think that okay there's no point in paying taxes because the government is not doing okay uh, perfect i mean something very useful for the nation and hence forth i am not happy there could be any number is why people are not happy paying taxes you could high tax rates or some people would have this source of income through illegal means and these could be the reasons why many people end up evading payment of taxes and all such money that you don't make, you make and you don't report would end up becoming a 
black money. So now having seen these terms, let me also give you a brief idea about what exactly is a finance commission. So according to article 280, you might have come across this term called finance commission. So we are not going to discuss about the composition of finance commission and various recommendations of finance commission. But okay, one thing I just want you to let you understand in the context of taxation is majority of the times you might have come across the state and okay, whatever the tax money the center collects is not what the center keeps it for itself. It is going to devolve or it is going to share certain tax proceeds with the states. So who happen to basically determine this? Ideally, it is the finance commission that makes the recommendation. So as of now, if you look at the 15th finance commission recommendations. So according to 15th Finance Commission, around 42% of the total or net okay, total tax revenue the center collects is expected to be shared with the states. And of course, the government of India has accepted the recommendation. And one thing I just want you to let you understand is the fact that the commission, Finance Commission recommendations are not binding. But okay, at the end of the day, if you look at the 15th Commission recommendations is what the government accepted and 42% of total tax revenue the center is collecting is what has been Okay, the center accepted to distribute with the states. So this 42 percent, what does it mean? Out of every 100 rupees of tax money revenue the center makes is what it is going to share around 42 rupees with all the states. So it does mean, what? okay, so 58 rupees is what the center keeps and 58 rupees is what the center is going to keep and 42 rupees is what the state is going to share with the states. And this is what we call vertical distribution. Okay, so the distribution between center and states the distribution between how the tax revenue is going to be shared between the center and the states okay all the states and union territories is what we call a vertical distribution so now how is this 42 rupees is going to be distributed among the states and this is what we call it as horizontal distribution horizontal distribution so who decides this and how is it made again we have a particular formula and a standard procedure with respect to how these tax proceeds are shared between the or among the states so based upon the income of the state, based upon the income gap of the state, based upon the population of the state, forest cover of the state. So there are okay, certain criteria, there is a certain criteria based upon which the okay, revenue among the states and union territories should be shared. Okay, so this particular distribution is what we call as a horizontal distribution. Okay. Now coming back okay, to one of two important terms that is really important for the okay, examination. That is the difference between tax and then cess and surcharges. Many a times you might be coming across these terms called cess and surcharges. So how are they different? So one thing that is common among these two things is cess and surcharge is basically levied upon the tax money we are paying, upon the tax burden. Okay. So that's a very basic reason many times people call cess and surcharge, they refer it as tax on tax. It simply does mean it's an extra levy that we are ought to pay beyond the tax we are paying. So when it comes to tax, let's say income tax, the income tax is a tax levied upon the income. I mean income tax is computed upon the income you are making, your taxable income. But whereas the session surcharge that you are okay, expected to pay is computed upon the tax burden. I mean the amount of tax money that you are liable to pay. So that's the reason many times people refer session surcharge as a tax on tax. Now let's say imagine if you come under a tax bracket of okay, 10%, let's imagine you come under a tax bracket of 10%. And at the same time, you come under income tax bracket of 10% or let's say 30%. Let's say you your income comes under a tax bracket of 30%. That means you report more than 10 lakh rupees of annual income. And at the same time, there is an education cess of 3%. Okay. So along with 30% okay, of your income, 30% of your income, you're also able to pay 3% of this 30% of your income. 3% of this 30% of I mean 3% of the tax money you are expected to pay. So it's not 33 percent. So 3 percent, 30 percent would come some, okay, some comes somewhere around 0.9 percent. So 30.9 percent would be your total tax burden. Okay. So when it comes to cess, generally the purpose of the collection of this cess is clearly mentioned. Like education cess, higher education cess, clean energy cess. Okay. So whereas surcharge, surcharge is something levied upon those people who ever happen to have make okay, a certain amount of money. So when it comes to cess, everyone who happen to meet the criteria is expected to pay but when it comes to surcharge, okay, when it comes to surcharge, not everyone who is okay, not everyone is expected to pay surcharge. Let's say in India, when it comes to income tax, okay, all those people who ever happen to report an income beyond a certain extent, let's say beyond 50 lakhs or beyond one crore rupees. So if the, the government could levy, end up simply saying beyond the okay, tax money you are paying, beyond the cess you are paying, these people who ever happen to report an income of more than one crore rupees are also expected to pay a certain amount of money in the form of surcharge. And what do you think is the government going to do with surcharge? That's not what the government doesn't necessarily happens to reveal it. And the government could make use, okay, 
uh, use with the surcharger in any way. So, whereas when it comes to CES, the government is going to clearly mention the purpose for which it is collecting and that's what the purpose for which the government would be spending and that's the difference between CES and surcharge. Though both happened, both CES and surcharge are levied on the tax money we are paying but uh, when it comes to CES, one thing you should keep in mind, the purpose is clearly mentioned and that's what for, for the reason the government is going to spend it. So, before going ahead, let me also make clear with certain important taxes and the reason why they have been in use in the recent past. Take the case of income tax. Income tax, as you all know, income tax is simply a tax levied upon the personal income. So, it's not necessary to remember about the tax okay, slabs, okay, how much is the tax rate one has to pay and what exactly is the slab rate for the examination. I don't really think such kind of questions should be asked. But the reason why income tax is in the news recently. Okay, So, in general, you might be aware of the fact for the past 2-3 years, we have the impact of COVID and the world economy is a recession. So, there's been a long debate that's going on because the government also happened to reduce corporate tax to a large extent, somewhere around 30 percent, okay, so 30-40 percent to okay, 22 percent to 2018. But it, that's a very basic reason majority of the, of the middle class people are also happened, I mean, are also expecting the government to reduce so, the income tax. And moreover, the reason why the income tax in the recent past is in use is the tax upon agricultural income. This has been a, a part of debate, the tax upon agricultural, agricultural income, the tax upon agricultural income. So, I think most of you are aware of the fact that the tax upon agricultural income, the right to levy tax on agricultural income is with the states. So, there are a lot many people who report a very large amount of income from agriculture and they end up evading, I mean they does not end up paying any payment of taxes. So, that is the basic reason most of the time there has been a debate going on that majority of the rich people and most of the people are trying to use this as an advantage simply to convert black into white money and that is the very basic reason these days we have this particular debate of levying tax on at least a high large scale form income has been on the has been in the news in the recent past. So, coming to the corporate tax. So, the reason why corporate tax has been in use, okay, I mean, let me define what is a corporate tax. Corporate tax simply does mean tax on corporate profits. Tax on corporate profits. Like we individual happen to make money, we are liable to pay taxes. Similarly, if corporates happens to report some profits, upon the profits they report, they are liable to pay certain amount of their profits as a taxes to the government of India. And this particular tax that are liable to, uh, that these companies are liable to pay for the Okay, out of their profits is what we call as a corporate tax. The reason why it's been in the news recent past is simply the government of India, in order to reduce our tax rates, okay, or simply ensure our tax rates would be on par with our competitors. Like see, they take the case of uh, case most of the East Asian nations, the average tax rates are somewhere around 20 to 25 percent. But if you look at some four or five years back, the tax rate, the corporate tax rates in India is pretty much high, so around 30 to 40 percent, beyond which they are liable to pay cess and surcharges. Isn't it? And henceforth, this particular high corporate tax is deterring most of the foreign investors investing in India. And henceforth, the government has reduced corporate tax somewhere from around 30 40 percent to 22 percent. Okay, so as of now, around 90 to 95 percent companies are okay, they are come under okay, tax bracket of hardly around 22 percent. And that is the basic reason this has been very prominently in use. And the second, okay, the, the other two important tax rates that has been again in use in the recent past, though they have been abolished okay, long back. Take the case of wealth tax. So, before going into wealth tax, let me define wealth. Wealth is simply, okay, is income accumulated over a period of time. Income accumulated over a period of time. That is what we call as a wealth. So, generally wealth tax is a tax levied upon the unproductive assets. And this wealth tax has been abolished, okay, when Mr. Arun Jetli was a finance minister long back. And that has been replaced by with surcharge upon large income beyond 1 crore rupees. But the reason why wealth tax and they gain estate duty. So, if you look at estate duty or simply what we call inheritance tax is a tax levied upon the wealth that has been inherited. So, why are these two taxes in, okay, very prominently in the news in the recent past is because you might have come across this world inequality report that has been published. So, since the inequalities in various economies emerging not only developing, okay, developed nations even in emerging economies increasing. So, that is the very basic reason people started simply, okay, bringing these things into limelight, okay. So, why not levy with tax, wealth tax or why not levy estate duty or inheritance tax because this particular income as of now people are making is resulting in a huge amount of accumulation of wealth among few people and this particular inequality is rising, okay, because of this the inequalities are rising and henceforth people have come up with the idea of why not simply 
bring back these taxes and simply levy taxes upon these people so that that would ensure okay a fair distribution of income in various categories of people and that's a very basic reason though estate duty or inheritance tax has been abolished long back and wealth tax has been abolished in recent past at they have been in use okay just for the sake of growing a inequalities and next comes okay before completing this session let's also discuss about various other okay important sessions okay, uh, important taxes stamp duty so when i say stamp duty or registration tax most of you have ever been to might have come across isn't it so when you end up purchasing a property or when you get a property registered it is necessary to pay certain amount of registration duty to the state and that particular amount of tax that you are liable to pay upon the value of the property at the time of registration is what we call stamp duty or registration duty and then coming to the excise duty it's a tax levied upon the goods that has been produced and traded in this country and then coming to customs duty so customs duty includes both import and export duty it includes both import and export duty so the tax levied upon the goods that are been imported from abroad and the good okay tax levied upon the goods that we export abroad is what we together is what we call as a customs duty and sales tax is a tax levied sales tax is a tax levied upon the inter okay upon the sale of goods within the state intra state intra state sale so if the sale happens to be within the state the tax levied upon this is what we call as a sales tax of course we don't have as of now sales tax and central sales tax because they have been subsumed under the gst but i just want you to let you know okay the various taxes so that you could rather appreciate the importance of a gst so and then comes the central sales tax central sales tax is a tax levied upon the interstate okay so when it comes to one state let's say if you happen to purchase a product interstate sale so if if okay if we people from telangana are purchasing some goods from state of karnataka the tax levied upon the interstate sale so from one state to other state is generally what is referred as uh, the tax levied at the time of sale of goods from from one state to other state is what we generally refer as a central sales tax that's the interstate sale of goods and services okay and the other taxes are entry tax or octroyed duties entry tax or octroyed duty are simply the taxes that are simply levied by the local government and the state governments okay at the time of facilitating vehicle, okay mostly the commercial vehicles most of the time you might have come across this particular okay taxes okay you also mean end up paying taxes whenever you move from one particular state to other state isn't it entertainment tax tax levied upon the entertainment services okay let's say if you have been to movie you might if you notice that there is to be a tax generally what is said to be called as an entertainment tax all on all such i mean any such kind of entertainment services that's been consumed one has to end up paying in entertainment tax and then tax luxury tax it's self explanatory isn't it luxury tax is a tax levied upon the luxury goods and services and then professional tax so tax on the profession practiced practice of profession so uh, for the reason you been practicing a profession of law or medicine whatever it is so in this particular country one is liable to pay a tax called a professional tax okay so before going ahead with this okay let me make it clear with what happened to, what exactly we discussed in this particular session we discussed about what is taxation what is the difference between direct and indirect taxes and then we have discussed about the difference between cess and surcharges and then we happen to understand okay various taxes i mean terminology related to taxes what is tax base and how is tax revenue and tax rate related and then tax elasticity tax expenditure tax buoyancy then later we happen to understood some important taxes like income tax corporate tax sales tax and then other taxes in the next session we are trying to under, okay will be trying to understand certain other important taxes along with the problems related to direct taxes and certain reforms related to taxes in the recent past we have discussed about various uh, terms related to taxation okay i introduced the term what is a tax i mean we defined okay what is exactly is the tax the difference between direct and indirect taxes and then we have discussed about who levies and how is the tax levied and appropriated and collected and then the difference between tax cess and surcharges some important terminology related to taxation like tax base tax expenditure tax revenue tax okay tax elasticity tax buoyancy we discuss some important taxes and we will continue the session with respect to certain other important taxes and reforms in taxation and then we'll discuss about some problems related to taxation that's how we will be concluding the session taxation